it's Nancy today. How are you? Well, oh, I wanted to say something about feeling bad about uh, or being offended at things people say. If you think of the phrase, to me, do you ever think of those words, to me? She, she did that to me. He did that to me. When you, when those words to me should um, put an alarm up in your head. When you're thinking about yourself and you're kind of bummed out, the weather's been kind of miserable, and then you start thinking about all the little infractions that people around you who sin differently than you do have said or done. If you think of the words to me, those those words you refer to often, I mean, that you can also use, you know, he gave a beautiful gift to me, but usually um, they accompany offense. Or if you are feeling offended, it probably has come from those words. Those words should send an alarm bell into your head. You don't have to take offense. You don't have to take offense. Offense makes you miserable. You're the one that will then react and go through this whole bunch of thought processes that are negative and then you'll um, separate yourselves from the people that are um, you know the other people that might be in the same group so when you think of to me be careful you're on it, it, it may be putting you on a, a spiral downward into negative things it's not Finding fault, finding, you know, thinking about things that have been done to you or said to you are, um, unless it's uplifting, it's not worth it. Just accept that people all are, they all sin and they all sin differently than each other and then you. Than you. And if you can accept your own self and that you are imperfect, then you can accept that other people are also imperfect. And we make so many mistakes in life. We put our feet in our mouths, put our feet in other people's mouths. We're really imperfect people. It's so good that we have the Savior. So good we can get rid of all this crap. Anyway, when a person who is offensive, and they may be a really rotten person all around, um, so they sin a lot. One day, if that day happens, and they come to a knowledge of their sinful behavior and want to change and become good, and they um, repent and are really, really sorry for the way they've been, they will be filled with joy. They will be, when they're forgiven, they will be so filled with happiness and joy. And so if you can look at these stumbling blocks, that we do to ourselves and to others, or that others do to us. These um, these faults and weaknesses of other people's, instead of judging them, just see them as a way that one day they will have great joy when they repent of all this stuff. That may day may not come in the time that we know them. Or it's not up to us to wait for them to forgive to repent to us. It's not up to them. It's not our place to decide that they are a horrible person and I'm going to be mean back to them unless they're nice to me. It's fine to separate yourself from people that are not nice to you. That's fine. But being offended by it is not good. I was with a person once who was continually uh, making me feel bad, or maybe she couldn't make me feel bad, I chose to feel bad, but she was continually put, saying things about how um, just everything about my lifestyle um, was hurting the earth, or was inorganic, or there were many things that she had decided were important in her life and in the lives of everybody else, and took no... Um, was certainly happy to let me know how my life wasn't in tune with what she thought it should be. 
And there was no way that I was ever going to be her friend. I mean, the, I mean, I thought she was a, a pretty good person otherwise. And I was content to be friends with her. But I realized that I came home and I felt terrible about myself after I'd been with her. And so I decided, and my sister gave me a good piece of advice. She says, surround yourself with people who make you feel good about yourself. Don't be around. If people make you feel bad about yourself, don't hang out with them. Now, if it's in church, it's often hard to um, be there when somebody is shooting daggers at you or to prayerfully take the sacrament when you know there is somebody that through nothing you've really done or you may have done something and then apologize to them and they won't forgive you and you still feel this terrible feeling in the room I know that's very hard but just endure you're not there for them you're not there because it, uh, they're you know but just uh, limit your interaction with people like that. It's better to not be, to not, you know. Anyway, so being offended, if you have the spirit with you, it's really hard to be offended because you're able to see, you're filled with love for people and you're able to accept their failings. With that, oh, that's just the way so-and-so is. Oh yes, well, that's just the way so-and-so is. There's some people you cannot take out of your life. You know, your parents, or your siblings, or your spouse. I mean, that's not exactly true. But anyway, and so if these people um, are continually doing things that make you feel bad about yourself, try and see them as the Heavenly Father sees them. Try and see them as um, you know, they're just one of his kids who are making many mistakes and don't realize yet the impact of their mistakes and don't feel sorry for and don't realize the impact of their mistakes on their own future and their own eternal salvation. But one day they may. Did I say it all? Yes, so try and it's so hard if you're I know that if I start feeling negative like if I start having thoughts about people slighting me not speaking to me when I spoke to them or or trying to figure out why they did something to me it's a spiral downward and it really will stop my whole day you know I can't function can't really accomplish anything on a day like that anyway so I just wanted to leave those things with you and help you through life as happy as you can be well Randy then carry on